All right, so here we are, we're doing geometric series. This time we're going to do something called sum to infinity. And you can't talk about sum to infinity without talking about uh, an ancient Greek philosopher named uh, Zeno, uh, about 450 BC, Zeno's paradox. And so Zeno's paradox went something like this. Uh, a runner, here's my runner, starts at point A, goes to point B. Now, to get to point A to point B, uh, Zeno, or our runner here, has to pass through all of this section here. Specifically, uh, what Zeno said was he had to get halfway. Okay, so he has to travel all of this distance. He has to travel one half of the way. And then once he gets there, he needs to travel half of here. Uh, so that's one quarter of the whole, right? And if that was half, that's a quarter. And then he needs to travel half of this distance, uh, which is half of this distance, which is one eighth. And then he needs to travel half of this distance, which is one sixteenth. And then half of this distance, which is one thirty two. And then half of that is half of that is half. Do, 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 do. Um, he never, if this is what Zeno said. If he has to pass through an infinite number of points to get to point B, which he does, because every time he halves it, he gets closer and closer and closer, but he never quite gets there. Half it, half it, half it, closer and closer and closer and closer. If he needs to pass through an infinite number of points, and there's only a finite number of, uh, a finite amount of time in the universe, then he'll never be able to get from here to here. Um, now, the reason it's called a paradox is because Zeno's saying to, to walk across a room, to run across from, from point A to point B, uh, you have to cover all of these things, which is impossible because you have to pass through an infinite number of points. But Zeno used to walk across a room every day of his life. He could easily walk from point A to point B whenever he felt like it. So mathematically, it didn't make sense to Zeno, but experimentally, he could always do it. So that's why it was called a paradox. Now we can resolve the paradox. All right, so you should be able to pick up that uh, Zeno's run from point A to point B is a geometric series, starting at one half of the distance, adding one quarter to the distance, adding one eighth to the distance, adding one sixteenth to the distance. And uh, we know that if we add all of those together, uh, the sum uh, of n terms is equal to a uh, r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. Uh, now that's how we've always used the formula, but we could um, rewrite it a slightly different way. So here's the slightly different way. Uh, what I've done is, instead of writing a r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1, I've rewritten it this way. Now, you should recall that we talked about this, and if r is between negative 1 and 1, so 0 0.5 or 0 0.7, you can see that the r value here, we're halving it each, or we're multiplying it by uh, 0 0.5 every time. So if the r is between negative and 1, 1, this might be a more useful way to write our sum of a geometric series. Now, all I've done next is distributive law, and I get this, a minus a r to the n over 1 minus r. Now, I can split that fraction and make it a over 1 minus r minus a r to the n over 1 minus r. Now, we have to start messing with infinity now. So we're going to say the sum to infinity. So that means an infinite number of terms. Uh, term infinity. So 1 plus da, 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 all the way up to term infinity. So the sum to infinity is going to be equal to, and I can use this, a 1 minus r minus a r to the n over 1 minus r. And so when I do that, for any of these geometric series where the r is between 1 and negative 1, something amazing happens. This n, well, it's going to be infinity. And the r is a decimal. It's 0 0.5 in this case. It could be 0 0.7. It could be 0 0.9. Now, if I take 0 0.5 and raise it to an extremely large number, like a million, if you put that into your calculator, your calculator will actually tell you that the answer is 0. Now, your calculator's rounding there. It's not zero, it's just so, so, so close to zero that it may as well be zero. So, uh, 
a, whatever the first term is, times r to infinity, and now we know that any decimal to the power of a really large number is going to be zero, that means that a, no matter what the first value is, times that is going to be zero. So zero divided by anything is going to be zero. Zero divided by something is going to be zero, so we can get rid of this. So now we have a really, really neat formula. The sum to infinity of a geometric series is simply a over 1 minus r, as long as r is between negative 1 and 1. If it's not between negative 1 and 1, then uh, it, it's, it, we're not going to be able to use a simple formula like this because it's actually going to end up at infinity. If we add up numbers that are growing in value, then obviously we'll end up in infinity. So this only works for r is between negative 1 and 1. So now if I use Zeno as my example, uh, the sum to infinity is going to be equal to the first term, and the first term was half of the room, half divided by uh, 1 minus r, where 1 minus r is 1 minus, and the common ratio here we know is 0 0.5 or 1 half. So what we have is 1 half divided by 1 half, which is the same as 1 half times 2, which is the same as 1. So, Zeno thought that he couldn't uh, go through an infinite number of points in a finite amount of time. It turns out that you can. In fact, 1 half plus 1 quarter plus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth plus blah 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 will eventually, as the term approaches infinity, you will get across the room. 1 is what this sequence adds up to. Uh, there are a million other examples, uh, but this one's the, the classic, this is what started it all. Um, as long as the r is between negative 1 and 1, we can use our sum to infinity formula.